Hello. Hello, brothers and sisters. What's up, Facebook buddies? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, man. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Let's see what God would have of us today. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, 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 hey. to tell me I couldn't do it that way. Amen. What's up, brothers? What's up, sisters? Amen. How many are here to hear from the Lord today? Thank God for his presence, his spirit, his kindness. Um, I can't thank God enough for just being who he is and all that he's doing. Uh, We'll be strong, won't be long today. I'm actually uh, on an assignment uh, uh, out of the local area. And um, I'm just grateful for what God is allowing me to do. I pray that uh, you are praying for me just like I'm praying for you. Uh, let not our hearts be troubled. Amen. Amen. Let not our hearts be troubled. Let's believe in God. He's going to do some great things for us. Um, so much is happening in this time and in this season. So I'm going to ask that you would take that opportunity to also trust in the Lord uh, in all that you're doing. Um, let's uh, let's find a way to get into uh, the spirit of God today. Father God, today we thank you for your loving kindness, God. We thank you for your, your outstretched arms, God. We thank you for your uh, diligent love of us in the most trying of times of our lives. We thank you for being there. Even when we think we're on our own, God, we know that you're there. We ask that you continue to bless us in every way possible, God. Let not our heart be troubled, God. We ask that you will continue to um, hold us accountable to who we say we are and that we be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you today, God. We thank you for all you are. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, I am excited. I am excited about God. I'm excited about who he is. And um, I know that he is definitely, definitely getting ready to do some new things. I want you to grab a, a particular verse, uh, the book of St. John 14 and 14. If somebody has that, would you mind posting that for us? The book of St. John 14 and 14. Amen. 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 The book of St. John 14 and 14. If you have that, would you post the scripture and uh, the numerical and the narrative part of that? St. John chapter 14 and 14. Uh, amen. 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 We're going to ask that you would allow God to be involved in what's going on with you today, for this is a powerful time to know the Lord for yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The book of St. John. The book of St. John. Amen. 14 and 14. Amen. I'm going to bring this in a little closer mm -hmm. to me. Uh, the book of St. John. Amen. 14 and 14. Amen. And that, that, that scripture clearly tells us, he says, not some, not most. He says, anything that you ask of me, anything that you ask of me, anything that you ask of me. So if I had a way to encourage you today, it would be basically, what are you asking God? What are you righteously asking God? Because he tells you uh, to seek ye face, see, you know, seek ye the face of God, but he also says, and his righteousness, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If you're gonna seek God, it's gotta be righteous. Um, you cannot burn yourself out um, with the things of the world, the frivolous things that will come and go, the things that will uh, not last, uh, those things that are going to move forward. And the next thing you know, they're on, they're gone and they're over. You're going to have to start asking yourself, where am I going to tie in what I'm asking of God to where God is actually wanting to place me? Amen. Because some things we ask of God does not necessarily connect us to God. Hmm. Wow. Let's try this again. Uh, and sometimes the things we ask of God does not connect us to God. 
So we have to be very, very careful as we get older in our lives, we get stronger in our lives, we get, we get, we get wiser in our lives. We have to be make sure we're choosing the desires of our heart that are matching God's decisions in our lives. For God does not set you up without wanting to set you out. And whatever he's setting you up in, he's going to set you out before the people of God so they can witness the miracles that he's worked upon you so that they can believe that God will work similar miracles upon them. Amen. And so I'm just want to encourage you guys today. What are you asking of God? What is your anything? What is your anything that you ask of God? What is your any that you ask of God? What is your thing that you ask of God? When you speak to God, is it righteous? Is it based off of emotion or is it based off of the motion of God? Let's try that again. Is it emotion or is it the motion of God when you desire to speak with him about the things that are going on in your life? Is it something that comes up and you say, you know what, I have to speak this, I have to say it, I have to make sure God knows it's me, I have to make sure God knows I'm encouraged and I'm inspired and I'm, I'm, I'm a part of it. I got to make sure. Brother Robert, we have a great opportunity to be vessels used by God in some of the most crazy of circumstances. Elder Janet, we just got to get serious about this thing and not let ourselves get caught up, Sister Michelle, and how we would want to let things flow simply because it seems like it's working our way. I'm going to be honest with you. God's people work better in chaos. Mm. I repeat, Brother James, God's people work better in chaotic times. Look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. The more that the plagues came, the more the people begin to call on to the name of the Lord, the more they begin to think that I'm not, I'm, it's not about me. It's about what God is having me to do. And they begin to seek the face of God with intent for change, not adjustment, for change. And a lot of times in our lives, brothers and sisters, Sister Victoria, Brother Bernard, we want to adjust to something, but we don't want to change to anything. I repeat. We want to adjust to something, but we don't want to change to anything. This is a great opportunity now while God is pushing things forward in our lives to seek diligently our thoughts, our speech, and our actions. Are they of righteousness? Are they of holiness? Are they of the, the encouragement of others? Is it the edification of others? Is it the elevation of others? Will it cause others to be inspired and aspired to do more for God, to do more for the fellow, fellow man? When you speak, does it draw or does it run away? When you speak, do people begin to look inside themselves and say, this has got to be something that has to connect with me because I know I'm lacking in this particular thing that's being brought before me. And this is what I love about the word of God. When the word of God is preached and teach, it doesn't matter where you are in your life. You should be able to pull something from it to say it is talking to me. It is speaking to me. It is bringing some revelation to me. And from that revelation, I must ask myself, can I get the confirmation from Mary, Mother Rosemary, to say that I am listening to the spirit of God, that I know that he is putting me in a proper place, that he wants to use me for his work, bless me for his will and carry me on his way. I don't know about you. I, 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 I'm just learning over time how it is OK, guys, to have joy. Yeah. It's OK. It's OK to feel good about yourself. It's okay to feel about some of the things in your life that may not be where you would like them to be, but thank God they're not where they could have been. So you're still asking, Sister Bernice, God, here I am. Use me. 
Use me now, God. I need you to use me for your work, for your will, for your way. I don't want to sit on the sidelines anymore. I don't want to hope it works out. I don't want to hang in the back corner of the, of the church or the back corner of my business or the back corner of my job or the back corner of my life. I want to be up front, available for you to put me in place, that you would set me up to be a beacon of light that somebody in this world is going to say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my very side, oh, where, oh, where would I be? Well, we know what we'd be. We'd be on our way to hell. Can we be real? That's what we, I, I'm just talking about me. I mean, you get in where you fit in. But if I have not begin to put my life into the hands of God, I would be on my way to hell. I think I've done enough in my lifetime that I could have signed a contract to hell. But I thank God that he tore it up. He set me free from it and allowed me to know, just ask of me. Anything you ask of me. But see, you can't ask God for things that don't bring you to God. I repeat, you cannot ask God for things that will bring you closer to God unless you're willing to be closer to God. How are you asking God for a husband? But you don't want to pray about a husband. How are you asking God for a wife? But you have no intent to serve as a husband. Brothers and sisters, this is a challenging time. I repeat, this is a very challenging time. This is a time where if you have never self-assessed in your life, you definitely have to start doing it now. You definitely have to start asking God, where would you have me to be, God? Where would you put me in your mind? Where would you shape me that I could start beginning to format some things that I have not corrected? God, guys, listen, we all got stuff. Even the brother that's running his mouth at this very second. We all got stuff that God works on us in daily, morning, noon, and night. He sets himself aside just to hear our plea, just to hear our plea, just to hear our plea, just for us to say, God, there are some things about me that are not right. There's some things about me I got to fix. There's some things in me I got to bring up. But God, I thank you for doing what you're doing. He sets these things up just for us. We just have to take responsibility, accountability, and reliability in saying, if I'm going to do these very things, then I cannot lean on my own under. Standing. I cannot leave on my own thought processes. I cannot leave on my own rationale. I cannot leave, lean on what I think ought to go my way, what shouldn't go my way. I should ask God to be the blessing unto my life. Repentance. Repentance. Not I'm sorry. Repentance. Not my bad, repentance. Repentance, which is true spiritual conviction saying, Brother Philip, Lord, I am wrong. And what I've said and what I've done and what I've thought or what I believed, and I want you to start working in me a new, new way to fix it, God. A new way to get myself back on track. A new way to put what I'm supposed to be putting it right where you would have me to have it. So that you can place me in an opportunity to bless somebody else. To encourage somebody else. To edify, to educate, to elevate somebody else. Brother Salvador, Brother William, we have to start asking ourselves, is this our time? And if it is, why are we lacking? If we believe this is a time for us to speak, why are we not speaking? If we believe this is a time for us to not speak, why are we not speaking? Why? Are we, I mean, why are we speaking when we should be quiet? Why are we quiet when we should be speaking? Why are we doing when we should be standing? Why are we standing when we should be doing? What is wrong with us that we are not holding ourselves true and accountable to what we've asked? See, you got to be careful what you ask of God. Because when you ask of God, it ties you in a covenant with God. Mm. 
covenant. <laughs> what do you mean? When Moses decided that he would accept the opportunity to see God in his most beautiful form from the burning bush, he said in spirit, I connect with you from now on. Oh, oh, let me help you. Let me help you. And immediately he knew he had got, he had got caught up in the connection. So he asked the God to try to catch how he could catch it from a natural standpoint. Well, who should I tell him that sent me? Hoping God would say, well, don't worry about it. God said, you will say that I am. That's all you're going to say. And so I'm encouraging you today, my brother and my sister, that wherever you're going to go out into this cruel, cruel world, you're going to be able to say, I am sent by the great I am. I am sent by the I am. Because I'm learning now that I am beautiful, that I am uh, full of joy, that I am full of peace, that I am full of long suffering and enduring. I am built for whatever the enemy tries to put up against me. I am strong and mighty. I am courageous. I am. Because I am dwells in me. And if I am dwells in me and I dwell what I am, then that means that I am whatever he says that I am. And he says that I am beautiful and wonderfully made and there is none other like me. And so I say unto you, my brother, today is your day. My sister, this is your day that you are set apart a royal priesthood to do God's work. To shut up in his will. To walk in his way. How many believe tonight that they that God is something special that he wants them to do? And maybe he's saying tonight, Pastor, I got to be honest. I'm not quite sure what God wants me to do. I'm not quite sure where God would have me to be. But I do know that he wants to use me. I do know that he wants to put some things in place for me. I do know he wants to take me from one level to the next, Brother Turner. Sister Cobb, Sister Sheila, Sister Shirley, Sister Tamara, First Lady. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said that thou shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. When God sends you somewhere, <clears throat> you don't have to justify why you're there. When you walk into the room, they're going to know who sent you. Because it's going to be, as an as a old secular song says, written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. So it's the burden. It's going to be right there. They're going to know. It's got to be God that's called you to say what you're saying. It's got to be God that's called you to do what you're doing. It's got to be God that's called you to believe what you believe. You know, I tell people all the time. I tell them all the time. Listen, listen. When you believe in something... No answer is needed. When you don't believe in something, no answer is going to suffice. I repeat, when you believe in something, no answer is needed, Brother Redding. However, when you don't believe in something, no answer will suffice. What's your answer tonight? Do you believe? Because if you believe, guys, can't nobody shake your faith. If you believe, guys, can't nobody deviate you from what you what you believe in unless you desire it or you lower your standard to raise your numbers. Elder Johnson, folk are going to have to start understanding how important it is to not be let persuaded by the enemy. If we're born to be men, we got to be men. We're born to be women. We have to be women. We're born to be children of God. We must be those children of God. Time is winding And I want you to hear me very clearly, brothers and sisters. Let me come in a little closer. This is not the time to second guess anything God has put you in. This is not the time 
to second guess how God has brought you from a mighty long way. This is not the time to second guess your healing. This is not the time to second guess how he brought you through in your relationship and on your job. This is not the time. But this is the time to ask, Lord, where would you have me to go? Who would you have me to help? Where would you have me to serve? This is the time. Because there is so much. God allowed us Sunday. We had our very first parking lot service. And I praise God for it. It was a beautiful time in the Lord. And God had me speak to the people of God by saying this. He says, you were tired of revivals. You were tired of second services. You were tired of appreciation services. You were tired of, 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 of prayer services. You were tired of shut-ins. So I took the building away. And you're still not closer to me. You were tired about worrying about trying to do this and do that at the church. You were tired of being there. You were tired of locking doors and turning on lights and turning off lights. So he said, I took the building away. And yet you still are not closer to me. He says simply, O ye of little faith, you're not grateful. You have become entitled. You have become fat and lazy in the spirit of how you serve me. You've forgotten me. You have forgotten me. You do not remember me. You remember my religious connections, yet you don't remember my relationship with you. You remember my rituals and rudiments of the church, Sister Young. Yes, Sister Christina, they're saying you don't remember me. You don't remember when I was there in the midnight hour and you were crying and nobody would hear your cry and I whispered in your ear that I'm with you. You don't remember me. When, when He said when you were in the hospital bed and you were on oxygen and it looks like the room was going to get dark, he said, my bright light shined upon you, Sister Kathy, and I let you know that I'm with you. He said, Elder Johnny, when you almost flipped over in that car and I stopped your vehicle from going over a ledge, you do not remember. You, he's saying, First Lady Tamika, Tamir, Tamir, they, they don't remember when everything was lost and all of a sudden they didn't know how bills were going to get paid and then all of a sudden a check showed up out of the blue and it paid that bill and then the next one, Brother Slater, they don't remember when all was lost and they were a decision away from taking pills they shouldn't take or pulling a gun out of a drawer and putting it where it didn't belong. Brother Omar, they don't remember that I interceded. They don't remember. He says, you've taken for granted the very things that I'm doing for you. you, you you're taking for granted, bro Washington. They're taking for granted all that I laid out for you. You begin to lean on your own laurels. You begin to lean on your own education. You begin to lead on your own financial status and economic relationships and your political diversions and inversions. And you begin to utilize those things you believe make you who you are. When he says, I am the great I am. You will remember me one way or the other, you will remember me. For every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. You will remember me. This is a quality time that we should all be looking forward to the destinies of our life. 
But we're so hooked up on trying to get to a destination, we're missing the destiny. I repeat, we're so bent on getting to a certain destination of our life, we're missing the destiny of our life. And the destiny of our life is where God wants to put us, Brother Maddox, not where we want to be. Because we really stop and think about where we want to be, it probably doesn't help too many other people. It probably doesn't inspire too many other people. It probably doesn't cause too many other people to want to be better and stronger and wiser in their life. But when you begin to accept the role and responsibility that God has placed you in, my God tonight, yes, it has challenges. Yes, it has struggles. Yes, it has some things that come up around you. Yes, it can be a little a little disheartening from time to time. Yes, you may look like you're coming out of the short end of the stick on paper. Yes, it may look like that you're the bad guy in this and the bad guy in that. Yes, it may look like you think you're better than everybody else. You think you're holier than everybody else. You think you're cleaner than everybody else. Yes, 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 yes. However, comma, what I want to encourage you by saying is because you're willing to live by that truth and that truth alone, he washes it whiter than snow. So it don't matter what other people thing. Mm. Don't matter. Doesn't matter that folk are upset that God wants to use you because they know some things that you've done in your past. So what? Thank God that he's working on me. That I'm letting him work on me. Because I know those things in my past have held me from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. But I thank God that when I was picked out to be picked on, I was picked up to be put out to serve his people. That's right. That's right. I am confident in my mind that I can say to anybody that won't listen and hear that if I've offended you, that if I've said something or done something from, from, from the last of the days to now, that I am humbly and, and, and openly saying, I am so sorry. Forgive me for anything I've said or done. And I can say this with conviction and I don't have to worry about what people are going to remark off of it or people are going to say off of it or people are going to twist off of it. It does not matter because I cleared it with God first. And because I cleared it, cleared it with God first, he says anything I ask of him and I ask for his forgiveness first of all in my life. And because I ask for that forgiveness in my life, that gives me an opportunity to say to you, forgive me and for me to forgive me. And my God, there we go. When I got forgive, now I can give. Yeah. Maybe that's where you're stuck. Maybe, just maybe, that's where you're stuck. You have not forgiven. And so you're having a struggle giving. You're limiting yourself. Listen, brother, if she's worth it, marry her. Listen, sis, if he's worth it, marry him. I don't know why I went there, but you know, whatever God gave it. Listen, if God gave you a place to worship, Worship in whatever way you can. Yes, take note of the pandemic. I didn't say walk running in, screaming and hollering, blowing your breath everywhere. That's not what I said. What I'm saying is, reach out to your leader. What can I do? Where can I help? Where can I be used? Where can I serve? Where can I sow? Where can I say that God is using me? Do you know what gives the validity to this post that I'm doing today? It's not mine. This is all God's. And the sooner we start realizing that what we post is not from the righteous, righteousness and holiness of God, it's just a post. I'm just hoping that this is a purpose. 
that what I'm saying today will inspire you and aspire you to work a little bit more diligent to being a vessel in God. And brothers and sisters, let me say this to you. Don't beat yourself up so much. The enemy has this unique way to always have you second guess when you're trying to advance in God. He's got this unique way of reminding you of the things that have held you back for so many years of doing the things that God would have you to do. And I come to tell you today, Psalm 51 tells you, purge me with hyssop, wash me that I'm whiter than snow. This is your purging time, brothers. This is your purging time, sister. This is your purging time so you can get your prayer time and get rid of your play time. You guys are awesome. Brother Curtis, I love what God is doing in your great life. Classmate, keep it up. So much is ahead for you and the things that you're doing with your family. God sees it. It's working. We have got to take the reins of our lives and put them to purpose. We have got to quit sitting on the sideline hoping somebody else will do it for us. The only way to get me out of hell is by my belief in Jesus, not my mama's. She can pray all she want, but I have got to put into prayer for my life. Luke 6 and 38 says give. What it's saying is open up, open up. Give means to open up. If you open up, open up will be given to you. People will open up to you. If you open up to people, people will open up to you. If you open up to God, God will open up to you. If you open up to you, you will open up to yourself. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying here. And by doing that, it gives you a measure. That means it gives you a scale. It gives you a quantity that celebrates your quality. And then explains you in various ways that your quantity and your quality will have value. It says it will be pressed down, shaken together, running over. It's saying no matter what situation that your, that your blessing comes in, it will always come out pure. Because it will come right back to you. And then he says for with that measure. For with that measure. That means it will come back for you to reassess and say I need to do more on this. I got to work on that. I got to get this together. It is everything you would ask, Brother James. We got to open up, Brother Leon, and just be honest with ourselves. God wants to use us now. Not 20 years from now. Not 10, 10 years from now. Not five years from now. Not Friday. He wants to use you right now in this moment in some form or fashion. Just ask him, how, God, how? How would you use me? Where would you have me to go? What would you have me to say? When Moses was sitting right there on the Mount Sinai and looking at the bush burning, he was saying, God, what am I going to do? He knew he had to go back. He knew he had to go back to Egypt. He could tell by the spirit of God being around him and the aura that was there. He knew God was reminding him he had an assignment, but he did not want to go without a purpose and a promise. So he made God release to him. Y'all, God, Jesus, y'all hear what I'm saying? He, he made God release in him the authority to do it. So God said, you will go. And he said, well, God, what would I tell them? So God said, let me give you the authority. Because a lot of times we go and do things that look good on paper, look real religious. It, you know, it get a few people to clapping their hands and some stomping their feet, but folks still on their way to hell because there's no purpose behind it. So God said, I'm going to give you, you're going to say to them, I am. That's what you're going to tell them. This is not my show. Moses came to him and he told him, he said him and Pharaoh were running partners, brother Russell. 
They were running partners before he left. The Bible says that when he got there, God hardened Pharaoh's heart because he knew Pharaoh still had a love for Moses. But if he didn't harden his heart, Moses, he might have let Moses walk out of there with them people simply because he loved Moses. God wouldn't have got no glory. So he hardened Pharaoh's heart so that the people of God would go through some seasons of looking up to God, not at Moses, not at Moses, not at Moses. They looked through Moses to find God. And when they found God, they went back to Moses and said, God must be using you. Ask yourself. 430 plus years those people of God were under duress and not one of them decided to speak up before Moses showed up the Bible says that one Pharaoh came who knew not Joseph now we all know Joseph was the one who sat there and set it up with the Pharaohs for the people of God to come move right into, into Egypt and almost live as equals. Yeah. Joseph set that up. However, Joseph, like everybody else in this world, had to die. And so after Joseph died, Pharaoh after Pharaoh came. And after the one after Ramses II showed up, that particular Pharaoh said, he didn't know no Joseph. Now, now, this is why I want you to catch this. Let me teach this to you. Was it because he didn't know because his the pharaohs did not pass it down how important Joseph was? Or was it the people of God quit talking about how God used Joseph for them to be there? What am I saying? Brothers and sisters, we're not talking about Jesus enough. And so we're getting leaders who are forgetting who Jesus really is. We're getting people in position of authority who are forgetting who Jesus really is. And so now we're fighting not against flesh and blood, but principalities in dark and high places. Are we every me today? That's what we got going. We got folk who can do the work, yet they're doing it without the word. So the only way to do the work is through the word. Because when you do the word, the word do the work. Somebody help me today. My brothers and sisters, we are spending a lot of quality time twiddling our thumbs saying all the right stuff with no righteousness behind it. Let's pick up the banner. Let's move forward. Let's get God the true honor that he deserves. Starting with starting with You just work on you. God will do the rest. My brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for a great and loving kindness today. I want to take the opportunity to let God be the author and the finisher of your faith. Those who might have said today, I, I'm learning more about who God is to me. I want to stretch my hands and accept him as my Lord and as my Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for my sins. Rose on the third day with all power, coming back again sin. Maybe you're saying, I know the Lord for myself, but I don't have a place of accountability. Brothers and sisters, yet the buildings are closed, but the church is still yet live. Reach out to a leader. Inbox them. If there's anybody tonight that needs prayer or someone that you know that needs prayer, please post their names right now so that our prayer partners who are listening and watching can begin to pray for those people. We don't need to know the demographics. We just need to know that person's name. If you require something more deeper, please inbox either myself or the Mount Zion Tabernacle page, and I promise you we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Brothers and sisters, this is the time to take your spiritual life seriously. Don't wait on it. 
Everybody who's on there tonight should have had at least one person name they should have posted, even if it's your own, that you want somebody to pray for. We thank God for those tonight. We ask that you would keep us in prayer. We had our first parking lot service Sunday morning. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We thank God for it. We'll start again this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. You can sit in your vehicle. You can catch a word from God. You can get a song or two, maybe. But the good thing is we, that we're able to kind of fellowship social distance-wise. But it's just being able to see somebody and see that they're alive and see that their heart is beating and see that God is still blessing them. That's a beautiful thing. So please, please, please keep us in prayer. Please keep us in your hearts. Please know if there's anything you would like us to help you with, assist you with, we'll do our very best. We're going to make an attempt here on the third Sunday of uh, this month to, uh, for those members and those visitors who guests who come out, we're going to have some backpacks to give away to those families. We know a lot of kids aren't going to school, but that still doesn't mean you don't need the school material. So we're going to place them in the backpacks and give those out. Uh, and try to do what we can in, 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 in whatever small way God gives it to us. But we're just concerned about those in the community. Uh, we're concerned about our youth. Please keep them encouraged. They're having to sit in front of a laptop for seven to eight hours a day. Make them get out of the house. When, when they're done with the school day, if it's only for an hour, hour and a half, uh, uh, make them get up, make them, make them go and do something, exercise, uh, pick up something, drop something. I know Brother James Hollis, Brother Leon Harvey, they know all about the exercising thing. Let them get the heart rate up. Let them, let them breathe. Uh, they're wearing oxygen mask. I mean, they're wearing masks all day, wherever they go. All of that stuff depletes your breathing. It, 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 it lessens your lungs being able to fully expand and, 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 and unexpand. And so you can cause the blood not to really get the oxygen it needs. Therefore, you start having headaches, migraines, pass out. So please, please, please get out of your house. Walk around your neighborhood. Walk around your yard. Uh, where you can breathe and, and, and just enjoy life. Get out, run back and forth in your front yard or whatever. Do whatever you can to get your heart rate up so that your oxygen can be able to run through your blood effectively. My brothers and sisters, you are part of something great in this world and it's called life. So on behalf of myself, my beautiful, my lovely, I miss you, baby. Mm, 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 mm. First Lady Tamika Murray, the Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian family, where we believe in faith, family, and fellowship best church my side of heaven i'm just talking about me i thank god for all of you who are on here tonight your family your friends your family your friends your family your friends you everything that i could ever ask you to be please 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 share this with a brother or a sister not because it's me but because it's god using me and i pray that god will do the same for you god bless you good night